Hi, my name is Brett Christensen. I'm a training development officer in the Canadian Forces. Uh, currently I'm stationed in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. I work at the Canadian Defence Academy at the moment and uh, will be transitioning to the Air Force this summer and I'll be working at the One Wing Headquarters which manages tactical helicopters across the Canadian Forces. My first exposure to HPT was during my training development officer course in 2004. Uh, one of my instructors was taking the uh, Master of Science in Instructional and Performance Technology at Boise State University. Um, so that was uh, what got me interested in it and uh, fortunately the uh, Montreal chapter of ISPI put on a two-day conference uh, in 2005 and I was fortunate enough to get to go to that conference and uh, met some uh, real leaders in the field, uh, particularly Mickey Lane who's going to be the president this year. And uh, so that was my first exposure and I was immediately impressed by the uh, sense of family that uh, that was at that conference and that was what drew me to the uh, international conference uh, later that year. Uh, there's a, a number of influences uh, that I've experienced in my five years in the field so far. Uh, um, I've met so many of the leaders in the field. Guy Wallace is uh, definitely one of them chasing me around every conference trying to get me to go on to a committee or something. Um, and, of course, to do this podcast, which I'm happy to do. Uh, I had the uh, excellent opportunity to do an HPT workshop with Gary Rummler, um, Roger Addison, and Lynn Kearney, and Klaus Whitcoon in New York a couple of years ago. And that was, uh, that was a pretty pivotal, pivotal moment. Um, but I've, I've met uh, and had the opportunity to work with Roger Chevalier also uh, through the Armed Forces chapter and he has been uh, uh, a strong, strong influence in my uh, success so far in the field. So I, I would have to say those are the two uh, most important moments. As far as uh, books and articles, uh, there's so much out there it's, it's hard to say. Certainly the HBT handbooks, uh, second and third edition, have been uh, uh, prominent for me, um, especially in my studies at uh, Boise State right now. Um, an HPT project that I've been involved with, uh, I'll talk about two. The first one, when I, uh, when I got my first assignment after my training development officer course, I moved into a, a unit that was doing e-learning production. And uh, it didn't take long after I got there to figure out that they had no system in place uh, what, whatsoever for the work that they were trying to do. And, um, and this was uh, right at the start of my learning in HPT, so I was uh, kind of applying what I was learning on the fly, um, which is a good way to learn it. And it's something in my studies and in my writings that I, I refer back to a lot because it was the first one. And um, uh, after we analyzed the, the problem as we were living it, we saw a number of opportunities for improvements including integrating uh, project management and uh, better integrating ISD into the work that they were doing to, uh, to make things better. Um, we, uh, we also developed a number of job aids and, uh, and we worked uh, the instructional systems design back to Ruth Clark's work um, in e-learning. Uh, and used her principles to as the real foundation of uh, what we were doing there. So it had uh, extremely good results and the products that we were uh, producing won national awards at the Canadian Society of Training Development two years in a row. So I, I think that speaks volumes to uh, how, how HPT can help you do other things in the workplace. The uh, other HPT project I'm working on right now is a little different. We're trying to uh, uh, introduce performance improvement into the Canadian Forces Leadership Development Framework so that we can bring HPT to the entire Canadian Forces at the workplace level, so the, the particularly the supervisor and managers of the Canadian Forces. 
we're following uh, work that the RCMP have done in the U.S. Coast Guard, and we've been talking with them. So uh, that's uh, that's been an inspiration to us. And where we're at right now is we have permission from our director to move into an analysis phase and look at the competencies that already exist um, for uh, leaders in the Canadian Forces and align that with the HPT model and the, the 12 principles from the International Society of Performance Improvement and define the gap. And once we have that gap identified, then we can uh, come up with a proposal on how to move forward. So uh, I'm really excited about that. We've been working hard on that for two years. Um, my 30-second elevator speech on HPT is not as well developed as some. And uh, uh, basically, when people ask me what I do uh, with respect to HPT, my answer is I try and take you from where you are to where you want to be uh, using the science of performance improvement. My current focus for learning more about HPT is uh, completing my Master's of Science degree at Boise State University. I've got uh, one elective course and my project portfolio left. And it'll be uh, finished in September, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and then my future focus, uh, my immediate future focus, is to finally get my Certified Performance Technology designation, uh, which will tie in nicely with my project portfolio at school, which is why I've waited till now to do it. And uh, then after that, I think my direction will be primarily towards evaluation. That seems to be the area that uh, uh, I like the most and that I'm the strongest at. So I'll continue to, to build on that.